So there's this new quote that I've just come up with, yeah? And it says, if it looks like a note, then it's probably a note. What's up you guys, Lord Hazen here, back again with a new video and today we're going to be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy no S22 Ultra this bad boy over here before you get to it make sure you've hit that subscribe button turn on that notification bell and drop a like on this video because this is the first s22 ultra review you're going to see from kenya so a thumbs up for that would be appreciated so best place to start this review is going to be with the impressions of the s22 ultra the phone feels premium well built nice and compact it's got some good heft to it and the camera bump the new camera layout the new camera design at the back is really what hit me and hit me hard it's one thing seeing this camera design in renders and it's a completely different thing you holding the device looking at it experiencing it day by day and either that design growing on you or you completely hate it I'm going to go off a whim here and say I was a big fan of the S21 Ultra's camera design, how it melded into the side rails of the phone. The bottom of the phone is where there's new changes. You get the S Pen, which you're going to get to in a bit, a speaker grill, Type-C port, and the SIM slot. Again, no SD card support in this year's phone. Up top, there's nothing. The volume buttons and the power buttons on the right, and that's just about it. Next, let's talk about the display. You get a 6.8 inch, 1440 resolution, dynamic AMOLED 2X 120Hz display with 1750 nits of peak brightness. I'll say it again, as I've already said, Samsung make the best phone displays out there. Consuming content on this, be it Netflix or YouTube on the go, is amazing. And this year, Samsung have equipped the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with LTPO 2.0 technology, meaning it can vary its refresh rate all the way from 120Hz down to 1Hz to save battery. While well, I thought I should mention that you can rock this at full resolution at 120Hz refresh rate. Your battery is going to take a hit but since you're paying for all those pixels, you might as well use them and you might as well use them to the max capability. Oh, and before I forget, this time it's a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus display. So on durability, you are good. Now, while you're talking about the display, we might as well talk about the new feature. New? And that is the S Pen. Straight off the bat, the S22 Ultra is coming with an S Pen. And this year, every S Pen is black and only the cup of the S Pen is going to be in the color of the phone you pick. Now, the S Pen this year has been improved, yeah? On the Note 20 Ultra, Samsung managed to dial down the latency to 9 milliseconds. On the S22 Ultra, they've managed to dial it down to 2.3 milliseconds. It's so good, there's literally no distinguishable difference between this and writing on a paper with a normal traditional pen. And this time, bulk of the improvements come in AI, where there's artificial intelligence that not only knows where the S Pen is on the screen, but can predict where the S Pen is going to go next. And that just enhances the whole productivity experience you can get from the S22 Ultra's S Pen. We're going to get deeper into the details, my conclusions and reservations on the S Pen and the S22 Ultra. So hold on, we're going to get there. Up next, let's talk about performance because boy, this here guy is not shy of performance. So, on paper, the S22 Ultra sports the following specs. You get a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset powering up the phone, or the Exynos 2200, uh, depending on the markets you're going to pick this up in. Here, I've got the S22 Ultra in the Snapdragon version. I'm working on getting the Exynos version so that I can run tests side by side and give you guys results. So you wanna subscribe to not miss those when those updates drop. You get Android 12 and One UI 4.1 out of the box. You can pick up the phone in either the 128 GB and 8 gigs of RAM variant at the baseline. Next will be 256 gigs with 12 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigs with 12 gigs of RAM, or one terabyte with 12 gigs of RAM, all minus SD card support. The phone does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery powering up all those specs. And now with 45 watt fast charging, you can power the S22 Ultra from zero to 50% in 20 minutes. Now. They've kept the same battery capacity as that on the S21 Ultra, but with a couple of tiny improvements for battery efficiency, for performance and power efficiency, you do get a little more battery life from the S22 Ultra 
uh, compared to the uh, S21 Ultra. And that's a segue to something that I've come to really enjoy and love about the S22 Ultra, and that is Samsung's software. So, as I said, the phone is running Android 12 straight out of the box, yeah? And it's got One UI 4.1 Samsung skin running on top of Android. So, here's the thing. Samsung are still forcing their bloatware onto you, yeah? The pre-installed apps that come with the phone. And you could say they're not in the way because they're tucked in, in a different separate folder, but that's something to note. There's still a ton of bloatware on this device. But there's a couple of features on this phone with this new software that I've just come to love. Firstly, One UI is cleaner than it has ever been before. I'm talking about the experience it gives you in the cameras, just zipping through the UI. The transparency element of the navigation bar, it's epic. I, I just like the step Samsung is making in the software department. One of them being, this phone is now going to be supported for the next four generations of Android. This here is running Android 12, Four generations in means it's good, perfect, up until Android 16. Epic. Now, on to probably the most talked about segment in every keynote these days, the camera. So, camera specs of the S22 Ultra. You get a main 108 megapixel f1.8 wide angle lens, a 10 megapixel f4.9 10x optical zoom periscope telephoto, a 10 megapixel f2.4 3x optical zoom, and a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide. Now, as you'd expect, the camera performance of the S22 Ultra is amazing. The photo and video quality is nothing short of what you'd expect from a $1,200 flagship phone like this. The colors are good, crisp, the camera is versatile, it can handle anything you throw at it, be it a ton of light or a little light, the phone will adjust itself for the best uh, point and shoot experience. The bulk of camera features, new camera features that have come to the S22 Ultra are buried away and these are features that will fly over the head of a normal average user who picks up this phone. I'm talking about features like Auto FPS, which will automatically pick the best frame rate for you to shoot video with. I can think of one, maybe two, two is me pushing it, scenarios where I'll be using Auto FPS. I did turn it on in my testing uh, with this phone. Maybe it's because I know how I want to shoot video, that's why that feature doesn't really make sense to me, but I bet the average user won't really make use of such a feature. The average user will just point and shoot. The next feature is auto framing in video, and this will automatically change the aspect ratio depending on how many people are in frame. It's useful from a versatility standpoint, but it uses digital zoom, which newsflash is going to kill the quality of your video. And come to think of it, the phone changing frame, mid recording, might actually inconvenience the average user. The third improvement that has been made in the camera department is going to be in the stabilization department. Yeah, the super steady video. Now, the main camera has more room to move and counteract the movements of your shaky hands when you're taking photo. And the video is unbelievable. Even though the main camera has the same exact 1.8 megapixel R lens as last year's S21 Ultra, each pixel that you get now is 1.23 times bigger, which means more details and more accurate colors. Also, now zooming in past the two telephoto focals will give you better image quality. Just look at these shots that I took at 30x and 100x from the S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. There's a new non binning mode for high-resolution nighttime photography. Here, it'll combine the brightness of bin photos with the detail of the one with megapixel mode to give you the best possible shots you can get at night. There's also an improved Pro mode with new RAW formats, and there's new AI studio depth mapping for improved portrait photos. Some features I wouldn't necessarily call new because those came in a One UI 4.1 update that came on the S21 Ultra last year December. Features like are uh, holding down the shutter button to automatically start taking a video, such stuff. Those are new features. They've been there and you can experience them in your UI 4.1. Right, so what are my full thoughts about the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra? As you all know, the Note phone died. Rather, we haven't seen a Note phone launch after the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This didn't come as a surprise to me because up until then, I had been reading on rumors and uh, leaks and news that Samsung was actually doing away with the Note lineup. 
Some rumors actually suggested that Samsung might be merging the S line and the Note line together. And in retrospect, if you look at the build up towards the S22 Ultra launch, that's just what's been happening here. So Samsung dropped the Note 20 lineup, yeah, the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. That's in 2020. In 2021, they dropped the S21 lineup and they give the S21 Ultra S Pen capabilities. In that, we thought, is this going to be a new feature of the S line uh, devices? Because the S Pen was only limited to the top uh, S phone, the S21 Ultra. And even then, you had to go out by a separate case to house the S21 Ultra and the S Pen. Yeah, So it didn't really quite feel at home with the S21 Ultra. The S Pen, up until then, felt at home with the Note Phone. But here's the thing, we didn't get a Note Phone in 2021. Instead, Samsung dropped the Fold 3, which had built-in S Pen support. And again, you had to get a separate case to plug in the S Pen with your Fold 3. Enter 2022, and they have dropped a phone with S Pen support and a place to put your S Pen. And, and, and I'll be honest, I didn't expect for Samsung to build a new Note phone and call it the S22 Ultra. They actually built a phone that feels like a Note, looks like a Note, maybe even smells like a Note, I don't know how Note phones smell, functions like a Note, takes productivity to the next level as a Note phone, powerhouse users know what I'm talking about, and they called it an S22 Ultra. And that leads me to my reservations about the Samsung Galaxy no S22 Ultra. First being the RAM options, yeah? So the baseline version of the S22 Ultra is the 128 gigs, 8GB gigabytes RAM model, right? Now, last year's predecessor, the baseline started at 12 gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, Samsung's justification for this is a new virtual RAM feature where the phone will repurpose its storage, some of its storage, to act as memory temporarily for those tasks that need it. I'm not buying that at all, yeah? Because here's the thing, last year's models all started at 12 gigabytes of RAM and still cost $1,200. This year, it's starting at 8 gigabytes of RAM and still starting at $1,200. That just doesn't make sense to me. The reasons they're using to justify this uh, cut down for the base uh, S22 Ultra is a feature that's coming to the previous phone, the old phones, last year's phones, in a software update, which just doesn't make sense to me. Because now, that feature hits the S21 Ultra at 12 gigabytes of RAM and with virtual memory, you're taking that up to say 14, 15, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Just doesn't make sense. Sus. So, should you go out and buy the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra? Yes, you should. How I see it, this here is a perfect phone for those Note users who really need a Note in their life. Especially those guys who are on the Note 20 Ultra. This is a worthy upgrade. It's a perfect upgrade. Okay. On the flip side, there are people who are going to pick this up and not care about their S Pen. I'm willing to bet my hard-earned money that there's someone out there who's going to pick this phone up and they're never going to take out the S Pen. Challenge me in the comment section below. That said, that's been the review of the S22 Ultra. Leave a comment down below on what you think about the phone. Are you going to be picking it up? If you are, let me know why. Also, a quick side note, alongside the S22 Ultra, I have also been daily driving the S22 Plus, and I'd like you guys to leave a comment down below on what you want to see covered on this year device in my full review. Coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. It helps the channel a lot. We've hacked the algorithm. We know that the algorithm will serve this video to more and more people if more and more people hit that like button. That said, Lord Hazen here, signing out. See you in the next one. Thank you.